Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News. And if you are tuning in, you are probably smarter than the average bear. And very quickly, I want to remind you that tomorrow, Friday, September 20th, is the gas strike and it is a global, global climate strike, uh, the beginning of many global climate actions in order to raise awareness around the issue in Los Angeles at, uh, at Pershing Square. There is a uh, climate strike or climate rally between noon and 3.30. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, you can go check that out. Extinction Rebellion has lots of things going on. Uh, be sure to honor the gas strike tomorrow. Um, if you must drive, fill up today uh, or don't drive at all would be preferable. Uh, bringing you a couple articles today. Not from my desktop. Well, from my desktop, but... <clears throat> from my Safari browser. Uh, this is from September 17th from fizz.org. Earth warming more quickly than thought. New climate model show. Again, faster than expected, more quickly than expected. Greenhouse gases thrust into the atmosphere mainly by burning fossil fuels are warming Earth's surface more quickly than previously understood. According to new climate models set to replace those used in current UN and UN projections, scientists said Tuesday. By 2100, average temperatures could rise 7 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Whoa. If carbon emissions continue unabated. So before we get to 7 degrees Celsius, we're going to get to, th you know, 3 and 4 and 5. When do those happen? Um, separate models from two leading research centers in France showed. That is up to two degrees higher than the equivalent scenario in the uh, IPCC 2014 benchmark fifth assessment report. New calculations also suggest that the Paris Agreement goals of capping global warming at well below two degrees and 1.5 C if possible will be challenging at best, the scientists said. With our two models, we see that the scenario known as SSP1 2.6, which normally allows us to stay under 2 C, doesn't quite get us there. Olivier Boucher Head of the Institute Pierre uh, Simon Laplace Climate Modeling Center in Paris told AFP. With only one degree Celsius of warming so far, the world is coping with increasingly deadly heat waves, droughts, floods, and tropical cyclones made more destructive by rising seas. That's what we're seeing at 1C. A new generation of 30 odd climate models known collectively as CMIP6, including the two unveiled Tuesday, will underpin the IPCC's next major report in 2021. CMIP6 CMI clearly includes the latest modeling improvements, even as important uncertainties remain. Uh, Joari, Joari uh, Rogels, an associate professor at Imperial College London and an IPCC lead author, told AFP. These include increasing supercomputing power and sharper representations of weather systems, natural and man-made particles, and how clouds evolve in a warming world. Tipping points, a core finding of the new models is that increased levels of CO2 in the atmosphere will warm Earth's surface more and more easily than the earlier calculations had suggested. Confirmed this higher equilibrium climate sensitivity, or ECS, means human, humanity's carbon budget, our total emissions allowance, is likely to shrink. French models are the first to be released. Uh, the French modeling groups are to be congratulated for being the first to complete their simulations. The most respected ones from the United States and the Britons and Britain's Met Office also show a higher ECS than the previous generation of models. A higher ECS means a greater likelihood of reaching higher levels of global warming, even with deeper emissions cuts. Boucher and two British scientists, Stephen Belcher from the UK Met Office and Rowan Sutton from the UK National Center for Atmospheric Science, wrote in a blog earlier this year, tiptoeing around the implications of the new models. Um, unfortunately, our global failure to implement meaningful action on climate change over recent decades has put us in a situation where we need to do what we need to do to keep 
warming to safe levels is, is extremely simple. Global greenhouse gas emissions need to decline today rather than tomorrow, and global CO2 emissions should be brought to net zero. How to do that is a really big question that people need to be asking themselves right now. The 2014 basket of, basket of climate models show Earth warming on current trends, an additional 3C by 2100 and at least 2C, even if, even if national carbon cutting pledges are all met. Uh, yeah. I mean, 3C is the death of humanity. So, you know, you could, you could say that's 2100 or you could say that might be a little bit earlier, depending on your... Depending on what you, what science you want to believe. This is from EcoWatch, uh, September fourth, two thousand nineteen. Mass extinction event two billion years ago killed ninety nine percent of life on Earth. Study finds some two billion years ago, a significant decline of once abundant oxygen killed as much as ninety nine percent of all life. On Earth, in a mass extinction event larger than the one responsible for the dinosaur die-off, publishing their works and proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a team of researchers described the catalyst of the Great Oxidation Event, or GOE, <clears throat> that occurred between 2.5, uh, 2.05 and 2.4 billion years ago. In the le years leading up to the GOE, oxygen levels in the Earth's atmosphere had increased significantly, resulting in the multi multiplication of ancient minuscule microorganisms. Suddenly, oxygen levels plummeted in what soon became one of the most transformative events in all of Earth's history, shifting from feast to famine conditions that followed in the next one billion years. Uh, paving the way for complex life as we know it today. We were very surprised, co-author Peter Crockford, a postdoctoral researcher at the Wiseman Institute of Science in Princeton University, told Newsweek. We didn't expect to see such a large signal, nor do, did we expect to find it in this t uh, specific type of example. So another example of a large extinction event. Excuse me. The findings shed light into ancient processes that eventually resulted in Earth as we know it today. By further studying how Earth behaves throughout time, scientists say they can better understand how atmospheres operate on planets outside of our solar system, specifically the interlink between the biosphere where organisms live and how that relates to levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Some of these Oxygen estimates likely require too many microorganisms living in the ocean and Earth's past, so we can now start to narrow in on what the composition of the atmosphere could have been through this biological angle. <clears throat> um, interesting, nonetheless. It's good to you know understand what happened in the past, so we can understand what will happen in the future. We kind of already understand what's happening right now. And it's not good. Um, that is all I'm going to cover. Well, let me cover this one more article today. Wisconsin legislature l legislators seek to criminalize climate environmental protests with the latest bill. This is from September 16th. All you climate activists out there, you better watch out. Lawmakers in Wisconsin introduced a bill on September 5th designed to chill protests around oil and gas pipelines and other energy infrastructure in the state by imposing harsh criminal penalties for trespassing on or damaging the property of a broad range of energy providers. Senate Bill 386 echoes similar critical infrastructure protection uh, model bills pushed out by the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, and the Council of State Governments over the past two years to prevent future protests like the one against the Dakota Access Pipeline. This bill would expand a current law passed in 2015 that made it a felony to trespass on or damage property owned, operated, or leased 
by an electrical or gas company. Under the new bill, water, oil, petroleum, and renewable fuel companies' properties will be covered. Indeed, SB 386 goes even further than Alex's bill by including all property held by the oil and gas industry in the state instead of a finite list of critical infrastructure. As a result, protesters and anyone helping to organize or fund them could find themselves facing jail time even for protests at an energy or water company's corporate headquarters. If the penalty under current law remains, those found guilty would receive up to six years in prison, a maximum fine of $10,000 or both. The broad sweep of this bill would criminalize not only protests that take place Near a pipeline, protests on almost any property that is considered part of an oil or gas production or transportation system. <laughs> Potential prison sentences, could you just include all roads and bridges and railways? And is that, you know, I wonder how, how, how broad the umbrella might stretch. Potential prison sentences involved are bound to chill protected First Amendment conduct, said Ellie Page, legal advisor at the International Center for Nonprofit Law. So apparently there's um, same bill rolling out in Illinois and I believe in other states, right? Louisiana and possibly Texas. Oh, safety, safety. In Wisconsin, trade unions and other supporters of the bill sent a memo dated July 29 to state lawmakers asking for their support of the Worker Safety and Energy Security Act. So uh, you can't protest because, you know, you're making those workers unsafe. Uh, workers, usually skilled union tradesmen and tradeswomen, are increasingly feeling unsafe and are seeing their equipment and even their own personal property being damaged. Are they? Attempts to improperly turn off or sabotage critical infrastructure is also putting our community's environment at risk and in some cases putting the lives of those doing the vandalism in jeopardy. Okay. But vandalism and protest are two different things. Two totally different things. Uh, but they're trying to link both of them, right? Disingenuously, of course. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that situation. That is scary indeed, because of course you probably see more of this kind of legislation spreading nationwide and, you know, how overwhelmingly does the corporate power structure want to thwart any and all climate change or environmental protests? Uh, we'll see how far that goes. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.